Hello, my friends. Welcome to Mark Room Tanks. In today's video, right, we're going to do a video on, on a question I got very recently, and it was about can you have too much moss in a shrimp tank? And I actually believe you can, right? And it just so happens that I had a friend here last week called Raymond Swart, and we did my tanks here, right? We went through my tanks and we removed a lot of the moss because. Um, having moss in general in a tank isn't bad, it has lots of surface area, it looks pretty. But guys, if you have so much moss in a tank that it stops the actual circulation of the water throughout the tank, then it becomes a problem, right? So I have a few tanks that I want to do today. And the way we do it, guys, is we actually do a tiny water change, we remove the, the moss from the tank, we put it into the container, and uh, we fill it back up again with some new water. Right, and the reason I do it this way guys is because I don't want to lose any baby shrimp and you can lose shrimp if you don't do it this way. So it's very important that you put your moss that you take out of your tank into a container with some water and you give the shrimp that are on it and the baby shrimplets a chance to get off. Alright, so let's do it. Alright down there, hello shrimplets. Right, we are going to do this tank here um, and I'll show you exactly why it becomes an issue if you don't remove um, every, anything that might be blocking circulation, right? So let's turn the camera around. Whoop whoop! So let's start by actually removing a little bit of water. We can clearly see here, guys, right, that the flow in the tank in this one is okay, but it's starting to become a little bit clogged up in the bottom. So what we want to do is we just want to open this up just a tiny little bit, right? So the way I do it is you get yourself your hose and your your bucket and we're going to take out a few litres of water now that's all we need because this is just to make sure that our wee shrimplets have somewhere to go right so let's uh, get this in here start our water and it's only going to be a few litres of water as I said right? and I noticed in this tank the other day that the moss in the trip is starting to go yellow a tiny bit on this side you might be able to see it in the camera that is enough water and what we'll do with this guys is when we come to actually uh, filling the water back up that we took out we'll actually just use pure reverse osmosis water that has uh, been left to age and yeah we'll do it from there right so let's get in here with our tweezers this is a very good way to do it and bear in mind guys that once you do this it might not look very pretty in the beginning but um yeah it's better than it is. You can see here that some of the stuff is starting to go yellow. You see it? Let's get that out of here. I'm actually just going to move this over just a little bit so I can put my bucket a little bit higher this bit. Oh, just so I'm not reaching over so far. You might see the corner of the bucket there. Right, so let's start to get some of this moss out of here. Right. So the best way to do this, guys, is just use a piece of tweezers. You can go in there all gung-ho with your hands if you like, but it's better just to rip it out like this. Right, and then give it a little shake and um, you will get little baby shrimplets and stuff coming off it right? so this is by far the better way rather than going all gung-ho into the tank all right and this takes a little bit more time doing it like this but you will save more shrimp you'll save more shrimplets right so do it this way if it makes sense and what else I'm looking for in here is I'm, I'm looking for plants that are growing a little bit too much like some of the hornwort at the back here this is st this stuff is still okay it's away in the corner but I'm also looking for leaves decaying leaves now you see with this this piece of moss here it's actually dying off quite a lot you see so we can probably go down to one big piece of moss so let's get this out faster and all this moss will be going into what I call my cull tank if it's not already too full with moss if it is too full it will be going into the crayfish tank to be eaten nothing goes to waste in my shrimp room it is a good food for crayfish because crayfish will eat anything that is they'll eat anything that is a vegetable matter wood leaves plants you name it crayfish will eat it so let's get this out of here. I'm going to try and get bigger chunks. I have a feeling I'm going to take this whole one piece out of here, guys, on that side. Because I'm not sure if it comes out on camera, but it is actually pretty dead in a lot of spots. You can see it here at the back. 
So let's just get this out. And uh, we'll see what we have left to work with at the back here. So most of that moss that we're taking out here was dead at the back. You can see it, there's at least, at least 50% of it is dead, I reckon. Stick it out. And this is something, guys, that you should do in your tanks. Just every so often, periodically, get in there, clean up the tank. Like this, and it'll help greatly with your circulation. Now, let's see. I think this was the brick thing that that moss was tied onto, you see it? Let's just take this out. Because the moss was no longer actually tied to it at all. And now the tank kind of looks a mess, doesn't it? So let's just clean all these little bits up here. All these little bits. And it doesn't matter, guys, if you miss a lot. But the aim with doing this is just to try and um, open up space so that then, then the filtration can get into all these gaps in the bottom and actually clean the tank properly. Does that make sense to you? Does it make sense? Because all these bits that are floating around here, they will all eventually sink to the bottom. What I'm also going to do here, guys, I just want to check the leaves. See, like, the so leaves like this, this is a good indicator that the, you're feeding your shrimp right, that they're eating the leaves like this. So I'm going to put this one to the back, like this, and I have a lot of different leaves in my tanks in different stages of decomposition, like this one here, look, it's just, it's basically a skeleton. This is what you're looking for in your shrimp tank. All right, and I'm also just cleaning up the ground a little bit as we go, because I want to see my shrimp, guys. I want to actually see what's actually in here, right? So I'll also add another half a katapa or something like that to the tank as well. Now, I think this, um, Moss, uh, this um, hornwort is nice in the corner, but I think it's a little bit too much for the tank. It's just a lot of plant material. So I'm going to remove that as well. I'm going to remove most of it, giving it a shake as we go. And I'm going to leave one tiny single strand, right? So if there's a bit comes off here, oh, that's one piece. I'm going to leave one strand like this. And we're going to allow this the, to open up with the circulation. You see, you see how this has opened up nicely? Now I like this this moss in the corner here. This stuff. But I think I would prefer it guys if it was on the back wall instead of the side. Right, so let us just see if... Uh, I think I put that up there, didn't I? I want to see if... Just be careful with this. If we can perhaps put it up on the back wall here into the gut where the other plant used to be. Now this is still stuck to the wall. Look at this piece, isn't it nice? Isn't that nice? If I can get it behind these filters, even better. You might have to unstick it. There you go, that sits perfectly. Look at that. Okay, so, as I said, this will look a mess a little bit at the beginning. But yeah, we're opening it up. We're opening up the tank and look at this big ball of dead stuff at the back. So get in here with your hands or your tweezers and just give it a little shake. A bit of chola wood there as well. You notice I started doing this with my hands with the tweezers, but when it's so much stuff, you maybe want to do it this way. So this, all this stuff here, you see it? This stuff is also yellowing and going dead. Don't look pretty, but this moss in the back will eventually grow down. All these leaves will be eaten here. And the goal with doing this, guys, is just to open it up. I'm going to take this part out because there's nothing on there either. So do you get what I mean? We're just opening up the tank so these filters can actually filter the water in the tank. Let me just straighten this one up. Like this. And that already is much, much healthier. Look how much more open it is. You can actually see all the little shrimp and stuff. Right, so now we're going to actually, we may as well clean the glass actually. One second. All right, shrimp, let's, let's get in with our melamine foam just to clean this front glass. Like this. Without catching all the plants and the snails and whatever else. Ah, see the greenness on the melamine foam? And this should help this tank a little bit. 
I don't want to go too low because I can see baby shrimp in the bottom in the buttocks of the tank but there you go I'm going to show you how I fill this up as well using our new setup because I don't think I've actually shown it on camera yet my new setup for water let's do that now okay shrimplets shrimp family of mine let's uh, turn you around because you'll see your face in the wrong way Whoop. So this is my new setup. This is my new water setup here. So I'm going to go over it very, very quickly because yeah, it is like this for a reason. The old setup was just too much of a hassle where I had the 200 litre drum. It was basically this high off the floor and it made it very, very difficult guys to clean the bottom out because yeah, over time you will get stuff building up. You're adding salts to all these containers and whatever else. You actually need to clean your container so I figured right, that if I'm not doing so much water changes in my bee shrimp tanks anymore, do I really need 200 litres of capacity for my reverse osmosis, reverse osmosis container? And the answer is simply no, right, I don't need it. So this is the new thing. Let me. Sh can I pan you down just a wee tiny bit and I'll maybe move my head down at the same time? This is the new setup in, in hole, right? And it's basically my water comes into my house. It now goes through a big sediment filter a big active carbon filter and then it goes to my reverse osmosis unit which is under here somewhere you, I'm not sure I don't think you can see it but it's under here right and um, I've done away with my um, sediment filter on my active carbon part of my RO altogether because I don't need to have to this is this is more than double the size of the stuff that was on my reverse osmosis and this also serves my house this stuff here right and uh, this water is, comes into here via this float valve here. Can you see it there? You can. You see the wee float valve? Oh, I can't even see my finger here. Right, and this is automatic, this bit here. So when this water drains, I'm going to show you that as well. Um, I only need to turn this little knob thing here, the flow valve for the reverse osmosis, clean water. And I, this fills up probably in about three hours, 25 litres of water. And it's more than enough for what I do in my shrimp room. And uh, it is just so easy to clean as well. So that was one of the main points I wanted to do this was I needed it to be easy to clean. I wanted to go back to this white plastics just so I can see how clean the actual container is. And I wanted, guys, I wanted it to be able to um, actually move this very easily, right? So I can actually lift this full off and in, into the floor and whatever else. And if I have to, right? I, I, I don't do it, but it's very easy to move if I need it to, right? So this is the other setup here, let me pan you up a little bit. And um, this is how I get my water to the tanks over here. Right? So it's again, this is new stuff. I haven't put it on my channel before, but um, I got myself a 12 watt galley pump from a place called Biltima. Now galley pump is something that you put on a boat and its purpose is to get water, for example, from a container into a tap on a boat somewhere. Right, so typically this type of pump is, um, it has a very high head height rating. If you guys know what that means, head height rating means the amount of water it can push straight up the way in meters. Normally it's in meters, right? So for this little pump here, it is, I think it's something like five or six meters, something like that. Uh, guys, if I remember, right, I'll put an image of, of it on here because I've actually had to cable tie it to the side here to stop it moving, right? So I, I want my, my galley pump to stay on the bottom of this container all the time so it sucks out all the water. So that is what this rod is here for. The rod is there to hold the galley pump in place. Inside the rod, right, I have the actual tubing that goes to the pump, right? It all fits on top of it itself and just it's just awesome, right? And uh, we go to this, it's a, uh, Slang, what's it in English? A hose reel. God, I'm thinking in Norwegian there. That's the first. Slang, a hose reel. And this is food grade PVC piping that you can also buy in Build Team as well. I, I will actually add links to this stuff in the first comment as well. I will remember, yeah, I will. Because you, some of you guys will want to get this stuff. And this is just a really, really good way to do it. Do it. I have about five meters of this stuff on this reel and I can reach it everywhere. I can even go outside here to the goldfish tank that I don't think you guys have seen. <laughs> and I can actually do water changes and whatever else <coughs> from here with this. I need more coffee. Do you hear my voice going there? More coffee, please. It wouldn't be a Mark Trim Tanks video with more coffee. Mm. 
So, uh, the way it's set up right now is pure reverse osmosis water in here. And um, all I've done is I've added a little bit of acid buffer to this because this is going to be for top ups only. This right now is for top ups only. So we use this oak extract. If you go to my um, about section, or maybe maybe in the description of the video, I'm not sure if it's still there actually. There's a link to a shop, Happy Dis. No, no, is it something? It's something like I can't remember the name of the shop off the top of my head. But this is where I got this stuff. It's the shop that is in Europe that ships to everywhere, right? And I don't think this was. It wasn't even like fifteen, twenty dollars or something like that. And this stuff is mega concentrated, guys. Like, I wouldn't advise you putting this on your skin or anything. It is a type of acid, right? And for this amount of water, I add three drops, just three drops into this, and it makes the pH plummet. But remember guys, this is uh, pure reverse osmosis, osmosis water. There's nothing else in it, so you will get this plummeting of the pH. Right? And I, I actually add the same amount, even when I have salts in here, when I'm making my aquarium water for my shrimp tanks. So I always add three drops. If you make your water, sometimes people make their water like the day before, I do it sometimes. Don't be surprised if um, you add your acid to the tank and then the next day it is different, right? So what I do in that case is, is I add a little bit more. Sometimes I add five drops. If I'm gonna use my water tomorrow, for example, I'll add five drops today. And this is only if you have used buffer in there. I know it sounds complicated, but it's not really when you think of it. Let me see. So this is the pH of that water right now. See it? 4.3. And a lot of you will be saying, Mark, that is far too low. It's not really because this is top up water only. Right, so by the time it goes into the tank, what do we take out there? Maybe four litres or something. It's like 10% of the tank volume. We're only going to be adding like 10% of this water back in again. And it's going to only make like 10% difference to the pH. Right, and the buffer that's already in your tank will quickly adjust this number here back to normal. This is what your substrate does. All right, so let me quickly show you how I get all this to work. Right, so it's the same setup as before. We have a little hook for our tank because it's important when you do this kind of stuff, guys, that you have your little flow control here because if you don't have that, what happens is if you do tanks that are lower than this container, like I have flow tanks here, you can have it where uh, or if you do it in higher, I mean, if you do it in, in higher tanks, you can have a situation where if this is sitting in the water, right? You can have a situation where the water is reverse siphoned back out. All right. And I, I said something there where um, if the tanks are lower, it is, it is kind of the same. If you don't have this valve here and you're going from tank to tank on lower tanks, what happens is the, the, you, the water that is here won't stop it. It will just keep on draining into the tank unless you have your flow control, right? So you should always have a flow control in between tanks, you stop it, start it, stop it, start it, and uh, yeah, you'll be good to go, right? So let me show you how I get this to work. I have mines onto a little plug system here. Let me see my point to this thing here. By the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but the galley pump is 12 volts, I think, I think I did. But you need an adapter for it because it won't come with the plug. And there's many, many different things that you can uh, use for 12 volts. It's only, I think it's 12 volts, 2 amps, if that helps you any. There's many devices that come with uh, that kind of power needs. And I have tons of it, guys. I have tons of stuff like old LED lights and whatever else. I think some phone chargers are the same. So it is worth uh, looking to see if you already have this. You, you can buy these online as well. But I just used what I had. I think this came from an old LED light through there. So how I turn on mines is I use my little, um, what's it called, radio, remote controlled radio frequency thingamajig, I don't know what it's called. You basically press the button and it comes on, right? So I'm going to put it over my little tank like this. I don't want it to be super strong and that is the thing with this pump guys, it's not as strong as my old pump but it is more than good enough. And remember this can pump five or six meters high, let's see, let's turn it on. This will fill up, you see it? All fills up. And that is it. Can you see that on camera? But that's more than enough. It's more than enough, right? So in between moving, remember what to do. Get your little controller here. 
and simply close it. And we're going to go over to the tank over there and we're going to start to fill it up, okay? One second. So I'm actually going to lift the reel over here and you'll hear me putting the stuff into the tank. Let's see, so as I said I have it on a reel, makes it super easy to move around the shrimp room like this. You see? Like this. And all you have to do is put it over the edge. Right, I'm, I'm actually going to open my valve here before I start the pump. It's up to you what way you want to do it. Press the pump on. And all the water will come back out like this. You see it? Isn't it? How easy is this to do? So I'm actually going to plan to do my uh, top-up system the same as this, but I'm going instead of using a hose like this, I'm going to I'm going to DIY some kind of reverse osmosis tubing into it, so I can actually top up my tanks the same way, guys. But it will be automatic, right? So the pump will come on itself like 50 minutes every other day or, or something like that and it will fill all these tanks up but that will be in a future video but it will be the same method you can see how easy this is look remote control on off tanks already full we've done, not done anything at all right, so you, what you want to do is you want to turn it off make sure your outlet is above the water and that is it that's how easy water changes are nowadays I know some people do I know some people do water changes with um, through the reverse osmosis unit. They actually do minerals and stuff in the bucket and then they send it through all the pipes to the float valves. But there is a problem with that and the problem is if you put minerals into RO water tubing, eventually you'll start to get stuff like um, algae and whatever else. You'll get stuff, biofilm, starting to build up in the tube and you'll start to get it to build up in the actual little button of the float valve itself. right? And then, of course... Eventually it won't work properly and you run the risk of actually over flooding your tank and all this stuff, right? So if you're going to do this, remember this is for top-ups only on the new system, right? But this, you can do water changes with this, but when we're talking about float valves, which you'll see in another video, that is for top-ups only. Get that into your head, top-ups only. <laughs> all right, shrimplets. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Just a little tip video showing you how I do uh, some tank maintenance, getting some moss out of the tanks, make sure that they're actually clear and the, the, flow, the water flow is actually good in the tanks because it's actually quite important. I mean, I, I think um, planted tanks, full planted tanks with lots of moss and dense, dense uh, planting can look really nice through it, but if you want optimal breeding, because that's what my channel is about, it's not really a plant channel, it's about optimal breeding of shrimp. Right, you want to actually have it so that your flow can actually move into every corner of your tank right, because then you're stopping debris building up and things like poop and whatever else staying in corners and polluting your tank. Right, so yeah, if you liked today's video then please like and subscribe. Oh by the way guys, before we go I would like to um, maybe thank my channel supporters that helped me keep my channel going. All their names will pop up here over a few seconds and guys if you've enjoyed today's video right there's going to be another thing popping up here <laughs> right in front of my face maybe consider watching another remember like that smash button smash the like button right and i'll see you in the next one thank you guys